Tak. Ja? Mhm. Well, this really is special. We're here on the top of the world. Uh, we're at Leukerbad, which is a ski resort in the middle of the Swiss Alps. Uh, my aunt Daniela is uh, kind enough to be the videographer today. And uh, she's going to give you a panoramic swoop of where we are at the moment. The Matterhorn, just in front of you. All the Alps. Where are we skiing? The Gemi. And the, the valley down there. And all the Alps in the back. Incredible. And we are starting Love's Labor's Lost, which I am going to do on this mountain, skiing. I'm going to attempt to read while I ski on the chairlift, the whole deal. We couldn't have asked for a better day today, so hopefully you won't be hearing too much wind in the microphone. But here we go. Act one, scene one of Love's Labor's Lost in the middle of the Swiss Alps. And to Ferdinand, King of Navarre, Baroon, Longueville, and Dumaine. Let fame that all hunt after in their lives live registered upon our brazen tombs, and then grace us in the disgrace of death, when despite of Cormorant devouring time, the endeavor of this present breath may buy that honor, which shall bait his side's keen edge, and make us heirs of all eternity. Hmm. Therefore, brave conquerors, for so you are, that war against your own affections, and the huge army of the world's desires, our late edict shall strongly stand in force. Nature! No. Navarre! shall be the wonder of the world. Our court shall be a little academe, still and contemplative in living art. You three, Baroon, Dumain, and Longueville, have sworn for three years' term to live with me, my fellow scholars, and to keep those statutes that are recorded in this schedule here. Your oaths are passed, and now subscribe your names, that his own hand may strike his honor down that violates the smallest branch herein. If you are armed to do as sworn to do, subscribe to your deep odes and keep it too. I am resolved. Tis but a three years fast. The mind shall banquet though the body pine. Fat paunches have lean pates and dainty bits. Make rich the ribs, but bankrupt quite the wits. My loving lord, Dumaine is mortified. The grosser manner of these world's delights he throws upon the gross world's baser slaves. To love, to wealth, to pomp, I pine and die with all these living in philosophy. I can but say their protestation over. So much, dear liege, I have already sworn, that is to live and study here three years. But there are other strict observances, as not to see a woman in that term, which I hope well is not enrolled there, and one day in a week to touch no food? and but one meal on every day beside, the which I hope is not unrolled there, and then to sleep but three hours in the night, and not be seen to wink of all the day? <sighs> when I was wont to think no harm all night, and make a dark night too of half the day, which I hope well is not unrolled there. Oh, these are barren tasks, too hard to keep, not to see ladies, study fast, nor sleep. Your oath is passed to pass away from these. Let me say no, my liege, and if you please. I only swore to study with your grace, and stay here in your court for three years space. You swore to that baroon and to the rest. By yea and nay, sir, then I swore in jest. What is the end of study? Let me know. Why, that to know which else we should not know. Things hid and barred, you mean, from common sense? Aye, that is study's godlike recompense. Come on, then, I will swear to study so, to know the thing I am forbid to know. As thus, to study where I well may dine, when I to feast expressly am forbid, or study where to meet some mistress fine, when mistresses from common sense are hid, or having sworn too hard a keeping oath, study to break it and not to break my troth. 
If studies gain be thus, and this be so, study knows that which yet it doth not know. Swear me to this, and I will ne'er say no. These be the stops that hinder study quite, and train our intellects to vain delight. Why, all delights are vain, but that most vain, which with pain purchased doth inherit pain. As painfully to pour upon a book, to seek the light of truth, while truth the while doth falsely blind the eyesight of his look. Light seeking light doth light of light beguile. So ere you find where light in darkness lies, your light grows dark by losing of your eyes. Study me how to please the eye indeed, by fixing it upon a fairer eye, who, dazzling so, that eye shall be his heed, and give him light that it was blinded by. Study is like the heaven's glorious sun, that will not be deep-searched with saucy looks. Small have continual plodders ever won, save base authority from others' books. These earthly godfathers of heaven's lights that give a name to every fixed star have no more profit of their shining nights than those that walk and what not what they are. Too much to know is to know not but fame, and every godfather can give a name. How well he's read to reason against re reading. But proceeded well to stop all good proceeding. He weeds the corn and still lets grow the weeding. The spring is near when green geese are a breeding. Well, how follows that? Oh, fit in his place and time, in reason nothing. Something then in rhyme. <laughs> Baroon is like an envious sneeping frost that bites the firstborn infants of the spring. Well, say I am. Hmm? Why should proud summer boast before the birds have any cause to sing? Why should I joy in any abortive birth? At Christmas I no more desire a rose than wish a snow in May's newfangled shows, but like of each thing that in season grows. So you, to study now, it is too late. Climb o'er the house to unlock the little gate. Well, sit you out. Go home, Baroon. Adieu. No, my good lord, I have sworn to stay with you. And though I have for barbarism spoke more than for that angel knowledge you can say, yet confident I'll keep what I have sworn and bide the penance of each three years' day. Give me the paper, let me read the same, and to the strictest decrees I'll write my name. How well this yielding rescues thee from shame. Item, that no woman shall come within a mile of my court. Hath this been proclaimed? Four days ago. Let's see the penalty. On pain of losing her tongue. Who devised this penalty? Mary, that did I. Sweet lord, and why? Uh, to fright them hence with that dread penalty. A dangerous law against gentility. And <clears throat> item, if any man be seen to talk with a woman within the term of three years, he shall endure such public shame as the rest of the court can possibly devise. This article, my liege, yourself must break. For well you know, here comes an embassy, the French king's daughter, with yourself to speak, a maid of grace and complete majesty, about surrender up of Aquitaine to her decrepit, sick, and bedrid father. Therefore this article is made in vain, or vainly comes the admired princess hither. Ooh, what say you lords? Why, this was quite forgot. So study evermore is overshot. While it doth study to have what it would, it doth forget to do the thing it should. And when it hath the thing it hunteth most, tis one as towns with fire, so won, so lost. We must have forced dispense with this decree. She must lie here on mere necessity. Necessity will make us all forsworn three thousand times within this three years' space. For every man with his effects is born, not by might mastered, but by special grace. If I break this, this word shall speak for me. I am forsworn on mere necessity. So to the laws at large I write my name, and he that breaks them in this last decree stands in attainder of eternal shame. Suggestions are to other as to me, but I believe, although I seem so loath, I am the last that will keep his oath. Whoa! Almost lost York there. Stay with me, buddy. But is there no quick recreation granted? Aye, that there is. Our court, you know, is haunted with a refined traveler of Spain. A man in all the world's new fashion planted, that hath a mint of phrases in his brain. One who the music of his own vain tongue doth ravish like enchanting harmony. A man of compliments, 
whom right and wrong hath chose as umpire of their mutiny, this child of fancy, that Armado height, for interim to our studies shall relate, in high-born words, the worth of many a knight from tawny Spain lost in the world's debate. How you delight, my lords, I know not I, but I protest I love to hear him lie, and I will use him for my minstrelsy. Armado is a most illustrious wight, a man of fire new words, fashion's own knight. Costured the swain, and he shall be our sport, and to study three years is but short. <laughs>